Okay, so in this video I'm going to take a look at some geometry questions, leave insert higher level. I've got three questions that I'm going to look at. The first one here is from 2017 and then the next two are from the 2016 paper. So you can skip ahead if you want to see particular ones or just stay watching the whole video and you can see a good mix. It's a mix of different types of questions in, that you might get in geometry. So we'll start with this uh, 2017 question. Uh, the diagram below shows the rectangle A, B, C, D. Uh, a, B and C, D are divided into five equal parts. So you can see here this is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this. Um, and some of the end points uh, of these parts are joined by line segments. So we have line segments going there. Uh, find the percentage area of A, B, C, D that is shaded. So that's find the percentage area of the rectangle that's shaded. So I suppose for this one we need to label some things first. So I suppose if we have a rectangle here, we it has a, a height, okay, on both ends there, and then each section here we can call something. So if we if we called one section A, then that would mean the full length here. That would be five A. So we can find the area of the rectangle fairly easy so area of the rectangle is just going to be h multiplied by 5a so that gives you 5a h and then to find the shaded area we have two of them we have area one and we have area two so area one if you look at it it's a rectangle and a triangle. So area 1, it's a rectangle plus a triangle. The rectangle has height h and it has length a. The triangle has a height h and a length of 2a. So if we calculate that out, the area of the rectangle, that's going to be HA. And the area of the triangle is a half times the base, which is going to be 2A, times the height, which is H. So we've a half by 2A by H, a half by 2A is A, A by H is AH, and then AH plus AH is going to be 2AH. That's area one. So for area two, we're going to do something very similar. Area two is a rectangle again and a triangle. So it's a rectangle, which is H and A, and then it's a triangle, which is H, but only one A now. It's not two A like the last one. So that's going to be H A, which is the area of the rectangle plus a half times a times h and altogether that gives you 1.5 a h if we add the two of these together that would give the shaded area of 3.5 a h now, I have this 3.5 AH and I have this 5 AH. So the full rectangle is 5 AH. The shaded area is 3.5 AH. So I want the percentage area that's shaded. So the percentage area, you put the, the one that you want. So you want the, the shaded area as a percentage of the whole thing. So the shaded area goes on top. That's 3.5 AH over the whole rectangle which is 5AH, AH is cancel, left with 3.5 over 5 which is 70%. Okay so in the second question, uh, this is from 2016, uh, we're given <coughs> a quadrilateral in, in a circle, this is called a cyclic quadru quadrilateral. Uh, the points A, B, C and D are shown on the diagram. They are all on the circle K. So that's basically the definition of a, a cyclic quadril quadrilateral is that all these points here are on 
a circle. Um, we're also told that AB is equal to AD, so this length is equal to this length, and BC is equal to DC, so this length is equal to this length. Uh, calculate the value of X, so that would be this one here. Well, in a cyclic quadrilateral, uh, one of the things that you need to know is that opposite angles always add up to 180. So that means 100 and this add up together to give you 180. So x is equal to 180 minus 100, which is equal to 80 degrees. Okay, so just always remember, opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. Uh, next, we're asked to calculate the value of y and to show all you're working out. So for this one, the fact that this line is equal to this line is important. Uh, so what, if we draw a line from C to, or from D to B, we end up getting a, a triangle here. And because this length is equal to this length, it's an isosceles triangle. So that means this angle here is equal to this angle here. Well, we know that in a triangle, there's 180 degrees. We already have a hundred, so that means these angles here would be 180 minus 100 divided by 2. 180 minus 100 is 80, divided by 2 is 40. So that means that part of the angle there is 40 degrees. Likewise, that up there is 40, but we don't need that for this question. If we look at the other triangle, <clears throat> this triangle here, we also have an isosceles triangle. This here is 80. We calculated that in the last question. So that means 80 plus this plus this is 180. These two are the same. So what we have is 180 minus the 80 divided by 2. 180 minus 80 is 100, divided by 2 is 50. So that leaves this angle here as 50 degrees. Likewise, up there is 50, but again, not really needed for this question. So I'm looking for the value of y. I have 40 here, I have 50 here, so y is equal to 40 degrees plus 50 degrees, which is 90 degrees. Okay, so the last question I'm going to look at here from 2016. In this question, uh, all lengths are in centimetres and all areas are square centimetres. The diagram shows a rectangle with side of length 7 and y. The value of the area of the rectangle is equal to the length of its perimeter. Use this information to find the value of y. So what it's telling me is that area is equal to perimeter. Well, I can calculate the area. Area is just 7 times y, so area is 7y. The perimeter, then just adding them all together, so I have another 7 here and I have another y here, so that's 7 and 7 is 14, and y and y is 2y. So, simple equation, uh, take 2y from both sides to get 5y equal to 14, and then divide both sides by 5 to get y is equal to 14 over 5. You want to write that as a decimal 2.8. So that would be 2.8 centimeters. In the next one, uh, the diagram shows a rectangle with sides of length x and y, where x is greater than 2. Uh, the value of the area of the rectangle is equal to the area of the perimeter. Use this information to write y in terms of x. So same thing, area is equal to perimeter. Well, the area is x times y, so that's x, y. The perimeter then, I have x, x, y, y, so that's 2x plus 2y. Now, I want to write y in terms of x, so basically that means isolate y. So if you want to isolate y, you need to get everything with y 
to one side. So take 2y from both sides. You get xy minus 2y is equal to 2x. To isolate y then, factor out y. So y times x minus 2 is equal to 2x. And then to get y on its own, divide by this here. y is equal to 2x over x minus 2. Okay, so that's just three exam questions on geometry. Um, if you found them easy, you might leave a question or leave a comment below and ask for a particular question. Um, if you have a particular question that you want done, I'll try my best to get it done for you. Okay, thanks for watching. Thank you.